Let me also acknowledge the tens Claire McCaskill of claims of victory in Missouri. Missouri. We now have another category. We've had projected winners, apparent winners. Now we have another self-announced before the other guys conceded winner. First Jim Webb and now Claire McCaskill. We, there's no there's no concession from the from the Republican once, incumbent in either of these. Once upon a time, mm -hmm. there was a protocol. The candidate who was losing would concede defeat, make the phone call to the candidate who had won, and congratulate him or her. At which point the candidate would say thank you for your magnanimity and proceed to the hall and accept victory. In Virginia tonight, we have no indication whatever that George Allen called up uh, Jim Webb and said, I've lost to you. He certainly didn't tell his troops that. So Webb proceeded unilaterally to declare victory. We just missed it here, but he did it. In this case, the same with Claire McCaskill. She declared victory. We haven't seen anything from Jim Talent to suggest he's given up. So. Once again, as politics deteriorates in this country, an old wonderful rule has gone by, which is you let your opponent who's losing say so first. This does beg the question, though, of what happens if either of them, especially Claire McCaskill, would be wrong. I mean, obviously, the Virginia thing is going to be recounted one way or the other. It's going to, and let's, let's put it this way, it's going to carry over into tomorrow morning. Right. We know that much. But is this... How, if you get this wrong, what happens? I mean, there's no. I, I they don't know. It's like, the, it's like weeks. the old famous Chicago Tribune uh, headline that Dewey had won in '48, but that was a joke. It was a failure of they jumped ahead of the news. Mm -hmm. Here you have the candidates jumping ahead of the news, and I guess you just save that as a joke for the next party fundraisers. Of uh, the other party, you've got a candidate claiming he'd won or she'd won and lost. Well, maybe we're looking at the wrong end of the telescope here, though, because with the Webb claim of victory in Virginia and the McCaskill claim of victory in Missouri, we are down to one Senate seat that decides who controls the Senate, and it's Conrad Burns versus well, let's, John uh, that Tester. That brings us to the latest numbers, and here we are, John Tester, Democrat. According to these raw numbers, uh, it, it was 64 percent of the votes counted, 124,000 to 100. 15,000 roughly, uh, a narrow advantage, but a significant advantage. It's enough to win, obviously, tonight in these close races. Uh, that won't be a recount situation. These are small states. This is a small state, Montana. So uh, you are right, sir, uh, Keith, if it, Montana goes, Missouri <laughs> goes, Virginia goes, that's three plus three, they go. They yeah, win. It could be as Montana goes, so goes the nation. Well, does that not segue us perfectly? up last week and I said, okay, what's the number going to be? And he said 26, yeah. and I think he, that's how far he had gotten. But I really do think something ballooned over the weekend. Something drove this much higher than that number, and uh, it was a hard one to kind of figure when it got late. Hard to figure this one. Yeah, one of the worst uh, developments from this uh, this cycle will be the new robocalls. Mm. Uh, they uh, had the most corrosive effect on the American household. Most people have an arm's length relationship with campaigning. You can toss the direct mail, you can turn off or mute the television, but when your phone rings seven to eight times, because it's been programmed to ring if it is hung up before it reaches 30 seconds, and it turns out to be all for a purpose of slamming a specific candidate or party, that's, as they said in The Godfather, a dirty business. Okay. And, uh, and, and people will draw the line there. It's a tough thing to get your arms around and legislate, but that has angered a lot of people this session. Thanks a lot, Brian Williams, Tim Russert, and Tom Brokaw. A couple of interesting... Thank you for that great run-through. I haven't thought all the way through that. Thank you, Lester. You know, it's interesting that tonight we're reporting on all the results, and the only one who has shown in that entire presidential field is Hillary and McCain. Mm -hmm. John Edwards not to be heard from tonight. Nowhere out there. Mitt Romney not to be heard from tonight. Rudy Giuliani, I didn't see him tonight. Where are all those people? They didn't play a big role in tonight's election night. They were out in the field. They didn't make a point to show up tonight. I found it interesting. Well, uh, the, the whole 2008 field and, and what is to be expected from it has changed tonight because we're not going into the end of, a, of an eight-year one-party rule in Washington. Now it's a totally different playing field. Who will emerge? Who are the Democrats' leaders now that they have at least the House and maybe the Senate as well? As well? How will that change their dynamic? And what kind of... What kind of hamstringing of the right. president, of a Republican president, will there be, and how would that okay. trail over into the next I'll Republican I'll get a new one campaign. for you, Keith. Yeah. If the Democrats win those two other Senate seats and the requisite number to take control in the U.S. Senate, there is a prize waiting for a Democrat to be majority leader of the U.S. Senate, a prize that wasn't available a day ago, a prize perhaps Hillary Clinton would like. She has an option now. 
She doesn't have to run for president. She can be the leader of her party in the Congress. Mm. That's not a bad role for someone in their second term. Not a bad role for someone who would have to risk all to run for president, but would have it all right now if she cuts a deal, as we've heard so often, is available to her with Harry Reid and take control of the Senate. As you suggest, uh, the entire playing field will change, not just in terms of the next two years, but as 2008 approaches and who runs, who doesn't, and what is available to them now. What is the, is the power now mm -hmm. sufficient for the aspirations of these individual Democrats? Well, I believe we'll have our first woman president when she can be the leader of a parliament first, rather than have to run as an individual in a kind of a John Wayne commander-in-chief role. Therefore, Hillary can become leader of this country if she becomes leader of the Senate and people get used to her as the leader of a party, in effect, leader of the country and its legislative branch. Over time, they'll get used to the idea of her as president to just quit the legislative branch without having become a leader and taking yourself before the American people and say, make me your leader. That is a big jump in history. Well, with Senator-elect McCaskill in Missouri, we now have 16 women in the Senate. And speaking of Senator, we are now down, probably, at least from the Democratic point of view, we're down to Montana, and we may get a call on that. The governor of that state saying Tester Burns will be called in the next half hour. A spokesman for Conrad Burns' campaign saying the race is definitely tightening, admitting that the Democratic challenger, John Tester, is leading in Yellowstone County. The Republicans have to win that to win statewide. It may come down to Yellowstone County in Montana to determine if the Democrats take the Senate as well as the House. That is what we're going to be following after this next break, Chris. It's, uh, you got to get out your map quest. Well, it's good enough. It's now one thing to look at. at least Who would have believed that we'd go this far? It looks like it's going to be in the high one, high 230s for the Republican seats in the House and maybe 51 seats in the Senate, enough to overrule Vice President Cheney, no matter how hard he tries. Unless Joe Lieberman agrees with him. Remember, Will you stop? <laughs> you, are, you are fishing in troubled waters here. Joe Lieberman says he will be a Democrat. Russert agreed with me on that point. Well, anyway, we're going to look at Montana. We're going to keep our eye on that ball when we continue. Decision 2006 continues here on MSNBC. Please stay with us.